There was a house haunted over in Newlard, and uh, it was a sister to me father, and it was a Protestant place. And uh, this he, he, this woman bought it, and she got married, and uh, they were living in for about six months. And uh, when they go to bed at night, they hear a door opening, and uh, they hear steps going up the stairs, and uh, they hear muck falling on the floor, and that went on every night, and went up to the cures in Eldred. And the cure came down twice and they came down first and down our good were still there second time. Uh, still going on every night and you hear the doors open and closing. So the last time he went up the parish priest came down. And uh, he he went uh, he went in, he said I want everyone out of the house. So everyone went out only himself and he stayed about twenty minutes inside. And uh, he, he walked back ways out in the door and uh, he, he, he had corked, he had a bottle and he had corked the spirit in the bottle and he came out and he said to the people, he said, is there a marrow hole around here? And he said, there was, and he went out and he threw the bottle in the marrow hole and there never was a sound in that house after. And that was my, my aunt who lived in that house and she said she never heard a sound after. I, I heard a story about down on the Kilmore Quay Road. The road had a very bad bend in it. You had to go around this tree. And seemingly the council decided to straighten the road and they wanted to cut the tree down. And the people, everyone objected to it. And the council workers came out and every chainsaw that went to the tree went to flying in bits. It was supposed to break. No one could cut the tree down. So the road had to be, went around the tree. It's still there. Yeah. But the tree is gone. <laughs> the tree rot eventually went there. No, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. Uh, there, was, there was a rat someplace out around Wellington Bridge, out around. Um, can't think of the place now. Grantstown, up past Grantstown, up that way, going up for the Friary, pa on past the Friary. And the, there, was a, there was a fairy rat up there, and uh, it, was below, like it was on the same piece of land as this farmer had. And he said there, I was about 12 or 13 or 14 years ago, he went in and he said, oh, that's all a shrug. And he went in and told me he had, he had ploughed a good lot of it. And uh, he went home that evening and everything was grand. When he came back in the morning, it was the same. The rat was back the same as it was before he touched it. There was this spot in the field, and no matter what you, uh, you saw in it, uh, and it was supposed to be a fairy, a fairy rat or a fairy, belong to fairies anyway. And you could plough away on, but there's nothing that ever grow in it. You could sow turnips and nothing to grow. And even when the grass was in it, uh, there'd, be, there'd be no grass on it. And they said that, uh, that, that, that was to be left there. That was, that was the fairy rat, and no one was to go near it. And then I was in the field. Did you ever see the fairy ring? Yeah. You often seen, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. There's one at present day at home now at my place. Yeah. And I was standing looking at him the other day. And they said, if you went in, if you got into that fairy ring between half twelve at night and two in the morning, that you would, you'd keep going never around the out ring and he'd never get out of it. My own father, before he died, yeah. he wasn't well at the time, but he went off astray. He always, he said the fairies had taken too, yeah. but he went off astray a mile out, out of his way altogether and came back in home in a bad, very bad state, you know, Ch choke him like, you know, and uh, but I think it was the first of his trouble, like, you know, he died, he, he didn't live that long after it, you know, but he, 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 I think he believed it, he believed that the fairies took him, you know. There was a graveyard up around our place and uh, my grandfather got a man to uh, plough and uh, they used to leave a big scope all around it, you know? And uh, sure, he got greedy and he went to plough in further. And the next morning, the horses were on the horses, dead in the stable. Oh, yeah, you couldn't cut a scalp or anything from a rain. It's the fairies owns it, you know? Yeah. You couldn't. But I don't know, I think some people did. And they say an awful lot of bad luck followed them for doing it, you know? At that time, the children were a child would be in a cradle by the fire, and yeah, the fairies yeah. would then take the child and leave a fairy child. But that was the go years ago. I don't remember 
but mm. years ago yeah. you'd hear that was a pair you know that's some, right somebody yeah. there yeah. was a pair you yeah. in that house well I never remembered you know just hundreds a uh, hundred years ago or more that they'd come in and take the their uh, oh often often took the child there was a uh, out of the pram yeah and yeah. the mother come in the child would be missing yeah that's right that's yeah. Right, yeah. yeah yeah isn't that they only have well, that they story. Used to leave, though. They used to leave another child, didn't they? They leave another the... child in his place. Yeah. But and it'd then... never be as healthy. I did. I have a story that my father told me now. Uh, and that's going back a good many years ago. And uh, where he lived in the Cruz barn town, there was a fairy wrath. And there was always quite a lot of rotten timber all around it, like, you know, because there was a good few trees around it. And there was two women and... One of them had a baby about six months, and she had it in the old-fashioned prams that yeah. time. And they went up in the rath to pick up rotten sticks for to have for lighting the fire in the morning. And uh, the other woman said to her, "We shouldn't go up here. We're not supposed to go up here." Ah, she says to heaven, "It will be all right. There's lovely sticks up here." So now this, she had a little boy, six months in the pram. And they went over, the, she parked the pram over there and they went over where there was a great big lot of rotten sticks and they filled up two bags and brought them back. And when she went back, she got an awful fright. There was a little old withered man in the pram instead of the child. It, it was a real little old withered up man uh, instead of the child. And the theory was that the fairies come and took the baby and put this other thing back there. No, again, I'm not telling you that for truth. No. That was the story. That's uh, why we, nobody ever went. But that wrath is there still today. I've been down around that way there last summer, and that place is still just a big fastened up field, and there's nobody ever went into it. My grandmother told me this story one time, and she swore it was true. Now, I'm 75, and my grandmother was dead for years and years, so I'm going back a very long time. I was about 12 or 13 when she told me, told me this story. Her mother was a midwife and used to go along like years ago, all the babies were born oh, in the houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd go uh, and stay in the house a few days before the baby was born and then they'd stay for about a week and come home and go back. But she told my grandmother as a child that if, you know, the gentry they were called, you know, the big house yeah, in the yeah, gentry, yeah, yeah. Tuppence Hill, you live down on Tuppence, you know yourself. Yeah. But anyhow, she said, if any of these people had a mentally deformed child, like a, a spinal yeah. bifida or a hydrocephalic or something like that. The lady of the house was never told, but somebody was hired to arrange to swap this baby with another baby that had been born recently of a poorer, a lesser type of family. And she swore this was true, that the mentally handicapped child was put in the pram and the other child was taken and brought and then the next day the lady of the house would be oh your baby's better now like you know you can have your baby and she swore this was true that her mother told her stories like that could you imagine that happening i could imagine years ago because mm. money buys everything doesn't it 